Hello friends, this video on DNF block elements part 29 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. There are such compounds also uh, well known for transition metals. See interstitial compounds, see transition metals actually are big in size. Right, since they are big in size, so if you keep two balls together or three balls or four balls together and they are big in size, you will have a lot of voids, big voids. And in these voids, actually small atoms like carbon, nitrogen, uh, oxygen, they can actually be fitted. Carbon, nitrogen, hydrogen, sorry, oxygen is big. Yeah, they can actually fit into these big voids. Now, now since the transition metals, the actual atomic size is big, right, big atomic size of transition metal. Since they are big in size, so when you pack them, when you pack these transition metal atoms together, you'll have so many voids. And in these voids, small atoms like carbon, nitrogen and hydrogen can easily fit in. And this space is called interstitial space. And these elements are called, or these compounds are called interstitial compound. They are not generally non-stoichiometric because they can just, they just lie somewhere here and there. Example, as I told you, TIH 1.7. The next is how is variability in oxidation states of transition metals different from that of non transition metals? See, I told you in transition metals and non transition metals, like both of these shows variable oxidation state, but transition metals it is more prominent. It is more prominent. We have more and more examples of variable oxidation state in transition metals. For example, Fe2 plus, Fe3 plus. Both are very common. Okay. So this is my transition metal. They have non-transition metals also. They have uh, very variable oxidation state, but they don't have, they are not that much prominent. And typically non-transition metals, their oxidation state differ by 2. In this case, there is no such logic, they differ by 1. Now we have to predict which of these will be colored in the aqueous solution. Let's start with titanium with plus 3 charge. Let's write the electronic configuration of this. It will be A argon 3D1. So 3D1, it has one lone paired electron, thus it will be colored. Okay, unpaired electron imparts color to transition metals. Vanadium with plus 3 charge, the electronic configuration will be AR 3D3, no 3D2 actually. In fact, this also has lone pair of electrons, uh, unpaired electrons, so this will also be colored. Cu plus, the electronic configuration will be AR 3D10. It does not have any uh, unpaired electron. If you see 3D10, 1. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. All the electrons are paired, so it is not colored. Right? Now, scandium with plus 3 charge, the electronic configuration will be AR 3D0. Again, this also doesn't have any lone pair of electrons, so it also won't be colored. MN2 plus, the electronic configuration will be AR and 3d5 again this has five lone pair of electrons so it will also be colored fe plus electronic configuration will be ar and then it will be 3d5 so fe plus 3d this is fe plus or fe plus 3 i think this is fe plus 3 so fe3 plus will be 3d5 so it will also be colored because it has five lone pair of electrons Cobalt with 2 plus charge, the electronic configuration will be AR 3D7, and this will also be actually colored because it has three lone pair of electrons. So you can show you, see that. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So see three lone pair of electrons. Okay, please note that Cu plus ion is colorless. Okay, I'm talking about the Cu plus ions, but when you talk about Cu2O, this is a compound, this is colored, this is red. In fact, Cu2CO3, this is yellow. Cui is brown. 
so color is actually because of due to due transition and this is in the ions okay please note cu plus ions are colorless but actually cu2 is colored so using this data we have to comment on the stability of fe3 plus ions in the acid solution compared to cr3 plus or mn3 plus ions the data given is for to convert fe3 plus to fe2 plus you actually get 0.8 volt of energy conversion of chromium plus 3 to chromium plus 2 needs plus 0.4 volt of energy because, because it is negative here and mn3 plus to mn2 plus also gives 1.5 volt of energy so we compare in ascending order actually mn3 plus to mn2 plus this gives 1.5 volt energy fe3 plus to fe2 plus gives 0.8 volt of energy and chromium 3 plus to chromium 2 plus this needs actually 0.4 volt of energy okay so in that case mn3 plus is not stable why because the moment you have mn3 plus it will try to convert into mn2 plus on its own and it will give this much amount of energy but cr3 plus is stable because to convert cr3 plus to cr2 plus you actually need this much energy okay so we can say that fe3 plus is more stable than mn3 plus but it is less stable than cr3 plus first part is done the second part ease with which iron can be oxidized that means iron can be converted into fe2 plus as compared to similar process for chromium and manganese okay so iron to iron 2 plus actually this gives you see iron to iron 2 plus will actually gives 0.4 volt of energy because iron plus to iron it needs 0.4 volt of energy so iron to iron plus it will give 0.4 volt of energy similarly chromium plus to chromium actually needs 0.9 volt of energy so chromium to chromium plus will actually give 0.9 volt of energy similarly here also so this gives 1.2 volt right because mn2 plus to mn requires 1.2 volt so mn to mn plus 2 gives 1.2 volt so if we compare these this is highest okay so ability to get oxions is highest in case of mn and then chromium and then iron right mn chromium and then iron manganese chromium and iron this is the ability to get oxidized okay so we have to give the reasons for the following the first one of the d4 species cr2 plus is strong reducing while mn3 plus is strongly oxidizing in fact we have seen this question cr2 plus is reducing and mn3 plus is oxidizing oxidizing means it will reduce on its own it will become mn2 plus and CR2 plus is reducing that means it will oxidize on its own it will become CR3 plus so if you see the electronic configuration of CR3 plus CR3 plus chromium with 3 plus it will this 3d3 and this is stable by T2G configuration if you talk if you see the electronic configuration of MN2 plus it is 3d5 and this is also stable using a half filled rule both these output are stable and thus chromium 2 plus is reducing and mn3 plus is oxidizing we can also actually uh, answer this question based on the value of e0 so if we see e0 of cr2 plus to cr3 plus is 0 0.41 volt and e oxidation of mn2 plus to mn3 plus is again mn3 plus sorry mn3 plus to mn2 plus i'm talking here about e reduction because i'm talking about e reduction this is 1.57 volt 
So you see, Mn3 plus can easily reduce and Cr3 plus 2 plus can easily oxidize. So these values are all positive. The next is cobalt is stable in aqueous solution, but in the presence of complex region, it is easily oxidized. So if we talk about cobalt 2 plus, the electronic configuration is 3D7. Okay. If you want to oxidize it actually to cobalt 3 plus, you need energy. In fact, cobalt 2 plus is stable. Cobalt 2 plus to cobalt 3 plus, you need energy. That is third ionization energy. But in the presence of complexing agent, it actually oxidized to cobalt 3 plus. Why? Because the amount of energy released by the stabilization of crystals compensates for this third ionization energy. Okay. Next is D1 configuration is very unstable in ions. So if you have D1, it is very unstable. It will try to lose one electron and becomes D0. And this is stable. That means it gets easily oxidized by losing one electron and thus it is a good reducing agent. Which is the first series transition metal which exhibit plus one oxidation state most frequently and why? So if you see here, plus one actually is shown only by copper. If you see other, they don't even show plus one oxidation state. So copper shows plus one oxidation state because plus one oxidation state electronic configuration is 3D10, 4S0. And this is a stable electronic configuration. Calculate the amount, number of unpaired electrons in the following, Mn3 plus. So Mn3 plus, the electronic configuration will be argon, 3D4, 4S0. So number of unpaired electron is 4. Similarly, Cr3 plus, the electronic configuration will be argon 3d 3 4s0 here also the number of unpaired electron is 3 then we have vanadium 3 plus electronic configuration is argon 3d 2 here also the number of unpaired electron is 2 and then i have titanium titanium 3 plus the electronic configuration will be ar 3d 1 here the number of valence electron will be, sorry, the number of unpaired electron will be 1. So we, we wanted to find number of unpaired electrons, so Mn3 plus 4 unpaired electron, chromium 3 plus 3 unpaired electron, vanadium 3 plus 2 electron and titanium 3 plus 1 unpaired electron. Actually you have to find in this way. So for example, yeah, for manganese you have to do like this 1, 2, 3, 4, it has 4 unpaired electron. For chromium, it has 1, 2, 3 unpaired electron. For vanadium, it has again 2 unpaired electron. Titanium, it has again 1 unpaired electron. Okay, which among this is the most stable in aqueous solution? If you see, chromium is most stable because others, there is no stability factor, but with chromium, we have T2G stability factor with two T2G configuration. Chromium is, chromium 3 plus is more stable among all these. Give example and suggest reason of the following features. The first is the lowest oxide of transition metal is basic, highest is amphoteric. The second is the transition metal exhibit highest oxidation state in oxides and fluorides and the highest oxidation state is exhibited by oxanan in metals. We have to explain this. See, we have already told that the lowest oxides of transition metal is basic and the highest is amphoteric. Why? Because in the lowest oxide, some of the valence electrons are not involved in bonding since the electrons, valence electrons not involved in bonding, some. In lowest oxide, some valence electrons are not involved in bonding. They are free and they can donate electron and they behave as base. But higher oxidation state, all of the valence electrons are involved in bonding and they don't have any free electron to donate and they act as acids. Okay, the next one is, for example, I told MnO is basic, basic, and Mn2O7 is acidic. Okay, 
The next was a transition metal exhibit highest oxidation state in oxides and fluorides. Why? Because oxygen and fluorine has high electronegativity, smaller in size, and thus the transition metals actually exhibit higher oxidation state with these metals. For example, B2O5, Mn2O7. The third is the highest oxidation state is exhibited by oxanions of a metal. See, oxygen again is electronegative, small in size, plus it forms multiple bonds. Thus, the highest oxidation state is shown by oxanions. For example, MnO4 minus, here you have plus 7 oxidation state. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch more videos. Attempt free online tests, get free study materials, find tutors and mentors, and much more. Thanks once again.